Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Witt. This is St. Andrew's United Methodist Church, Virginia Beach. I love this day. Best day of the entire year. Wow. Oh, it's just, uh, it's the best. It's the best. I like Christmas, but it does not compare. It does not compare. Hope you've had a great week. Holy week. Hope you've been able to move from the palms all the way through um, Holy Thursday, um, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday. And here we are. Jesus came in with the waving of the palms. He uh, went through the um, through the temple, irritated people, turned over tables. He uh, he healed folks. He talked to people. He got questions by questioned by leadership. Tough week on Jesus. Tough week on the boys. He got crucified. Then a couple days later, here we are. Here we are. I thank God for this day. Again, I hope you're well. I hope you're taking care of your people, your families, your friends. It's important that you care for other people. Don't be one of those folks that only cares for yourself. Be a person who cares for other people. This is what Jesus came, I think, in part to teach us. Thank you for your ministries. Thank you for your financial support, for the support of the ministries of Christ here and otherwhere and elsewhere. Um, how about we begin our time of worship by um, just taking a couple moments to center ourselves on Christ. Let's pray.
not hear the call to worship and the centering prayer. The tomb is dark, but it's empty. Has the one we are looking for overcome the darkness? The stone is here, but it's rolled away. Has the one we are looking for overcome death? The burial clothes are here, but they're folded and placed over there like they were cared for. Has the one we are looking for been unwrapped and is alive? Has Christ is risen? Yes, I believe Christ is risen. Yes, Christ is risen. Yes, Christ is risen indeed. Wow, then let us worship our risen Savior. That's a great idea. Come, let us worship you, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, we repeat our Easter shouts of surprise and joy again and again for the news of your victory over powers of death and evil. This news is so startling, so amazing, so different from the news that bombards us day by day. It is nearly beyond our comprehension. You startle us again and again with resurrection life. You offer grace filled with hope and joy. You, in your risen power, are shaping all of our days, and so we praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, come on, you can say it louder than that. Happy Easter! Yes, because today is the day that we realize the fantastic news of the empty tomb and the truth of Jesus being raised from the dead. The news is so wonderful that we want to share it with everyone. In my lap, there is a drum. And as I beat the drum, I want you to guess what it is that I am feeling. Happy? You're right. What about this? It's a much more sad sound, isn't it? Well, you seem to be pretty good at this. And I want to tell you the story of Easter now but I want you to focus on hearing it through the sounds that I make and the feelings that they represent. I'm wondering if you can't pat your laps to the same beat that I do and to share the feelings of this Easter story. Jesus was the light of the world. God's love walking with the people. 
teaching them, healing them. It was a wonderful time. But then there were some people who did not love Jesus. They were afraid of his great love, and so they decided to kill him. They arrested him. They hurt him. They made him wear a crown of thorns and carry his cross. They hung him on that cross. They killed him. Jesus died, and that was the saddest day ever. People were so sad. On the third day after Jesus had been taken from the cross and laid in the tomb, they went there to take care of his body. When they got there, they found the best news ever. Jesus was alive again. He was raised and his love was still with them. And it was the happiest day ever. You know, that is our happy Easter story. That's what it sounds like. But there was one problem. We didn't get a chance, like those that went to the empty tomb that day, to run and shout to others the good news of Easter Sunday. So I'm wondering if you could help me as together using our laps as drums, we can pat out the excitement that they must have felt, those who found the tomb empty and discovered that Jesus was not dead. How they would have felt. Together, let's pat as fast as we can, as loud as we can. Don't hurt yourself. As we act like those who ran to tell us this wonderful news. As they got closer to the tomb, Slowly, they looked in. Jesus wasn't there. And quickly they realized he was alive. And they found themselves running, overjoyed with the excitement to spread the good news. And soon many people were talking about how God had raised Jesus from the dead. That's what happiness sounds like. And Easter is the happiest day ever. Find someone today and tell them, Happy Easter. Let us pray. God of the Resurrection, thank you for the fantastic news. May we always be excited to share the Easter story and tell people that Jesus is alive. Amen. Let us pray for God's illumination. Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, open for us your written word. Holy Spirit, come and attach to these spoken words and make them become living experiences for us so that we may have and hear a renewed message from you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. This morning's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and she said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, 
but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been laid on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting there where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Well, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and she said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not touch me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that she had seen these things to her. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. The written word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The darkness sends to be more than the cloud. His head to the mountain that came from the crowd. Son of a carpenter, what makes you think that you have the right to the crown? 
What a week. What a week. The palm wavings, the, the cloaks being laid on the ground, Jesus riding in on a cult into Jerusalem, the cleansing of the temple, the... Uh, hmm. All of the things that took place this week. And then on Friday, Jesus being crucified, nailed to a cross. Nails. <laughs> Hanging there and dying. Then hurriedly being wrapped and, and put in a tomb that was um, new. And then all the guys, the men and the women, going back up to that room, we call it the upper room, and, and hiding there behind locked doors for fear that someone was going to come and get them next. And there they were for days. Until Sunday came, and Mary. You know, there are different stories about who went uh, the one we read this morning is just Mary by herself, but there are others that other women went with Mary. And she ran to the tomb and she found the stone was removed and that Jesus was gone. I suspect she was terrified. Um, I've tried to look into her this week. I tried to get inside of her. And I can't imagine the fear of going out before daylight and, and working her way from that upper room over to the tomb and then getting there and the big stone was rolled out of the way and looking inside and finding no Jesus. She ran back to uh, she ran back to the house to the to the upper room and um, she told the guys, two of them, go running back to the tomb. I'm not sure what to make of that little foot race thing that's in there, but uh, I read some things this week I didn't really buy into. But it's interesting. It's interesting. Um, the looking in and going in and seeing that there's no one there can't really imagine how that would affect me. If there was someone that I loved and I went to their tomb, to their graveside, and the soil was pulled up out of the way and the, the box was opened and the person wasn't there, I'm not sure how I would take that. Perplexed, yeah. Those guys then worked their way back, back to the upper room to hide some more and Mary she she just sort of stood there. I've wondered this week when the guys, there's a piece of scripture there which says that uh, as of yet they did not understand the scriptures. Um, that he must be raised from the dead. And, and I wondered this week, did they understand it at that point or did they simply understand only that he was gone. Hmm. Well, Mary's the one that I've really concentrated on this week. She's the one that's standing outside the tomb and um, she's weeping and I asked a question this week what are we to do at gravesides? Have you ever seen anyone spend a long period of time at a graveside? Um, I have over the years done many funerals and quite frankly funerals are my favorite part of my ministry. I love funerals. I've only had one that I really didn't care for. 
Um, and it's because the family members couldn't stand each other and were arguing all the way up through the entire thing. It was it was horrific. But um, have you ever noticed that people sometimes just stay at the tomb, stay at the the graveside? I remember one person. After the service was completed, the committal, she sat there for a long period of time. And then she stood up and went over and threw herself on the casket and began to cry and weep. And she began to shout, Old oh, Daddy, Old oh, Daddy, Old oh, Daddy. Her fiance had died in a, in a car crash and he was he wasn't a classmate, but we went to school together. He was one year behind me, or a couple years behind me. I knew him. His sister was a classmate of mine. And it was my sister. She wouldn't leave the tomb. And finally, my father had to pick her up and carry her to the car. I've seen other people sit there. I've talked with folks recently who are returning to the tomb almost daily. I thought about that this week and I, I, I thought, you know, what are they doing? What are they looking for? What are they seeking? And that's the question that, that you know, that's the question that these guys inside the tomb and the question that Jesus asks Mary. You know, why are you weeping? I thought about that this week and I thought, well, why are we weeping at the tomb? Why are we weeping at the grave? For what? For whom? To what end? Are we weeping at the tomb? Beverly Gavinta says that humanity has an inability to grasp the fact of resurrection. Maybe so. Maybe so. I most definitely find that interesting. Uh, the story by Luke uh, about this particular Sunday. I want to read a piece of it to you. First day of the week, Sunday, early dawn, they, they went to the tomb taking spices that they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away. But when they went in, they did not find the body. And while they were perplexed by this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. And the women were terrified and bowed their face to the ground. But the men said to them, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He's risen. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? You know, Jesus had told them many times uh, that he was going to die and be raised from the dead. Probably far more... <coughs> than we've heard in the, the four Gospels, which really, even if you just take the week of this past week, we have very little for the life of somebody who's walking with people and talking. And so I suspect that Jesus discussed this far more than we have actually inside of our Bible. Yet, there they went, seeking the living among the dead. You know, in the John story there, Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. Someone said to me this week, I, I called several people and talked about this, and I said, you know, why is Mary standing outside the tomb weeping? <laughs> it's interesting to me. Everyone said, I don't know, I've never thought about that. And I said, well, 
This is what I want to talk about this week. This is why. And one of them said, well, we're not interested in change and fearful of what that might be. Hmm, maybe so. A buddy of mine this week, um, Dave, uh, he said, we're unwilling to give up what we had to receive what God wants to give us. It was actually Marty that said that. We're, we're unable to give up that which we had to receive what God wants to give us. Is that true of you? I ask myself, is that true of me? Am I, willing, am I unwilling to give up what I have had well, you know, maybe there is some truth to that. Maybe I'm far more comfortable in what I've had than I would be in what may come. Maybe, I don't know. The question for you and me, I guess, is um, what do we hold on to? Death or resurrection? When, when we're faced with death, and uh, all of us are on a regular basis. Um, I've got two people in, in my family that have been given three years to live. Um, my son and uh, brother-in-law. Uh, it, it may be that they'll live for 50. Who knows? But that's what the doctors have said to them. You know, that these things that they have, two different things. Uh, a brain tumor and... Uh, a very strange disease of the heart and such. Uh, but what do we want to hold on to and why do we want to hold on to it? I contemplated that this week. I thought, you know, as, as we go to a funeral, without a doubt, a big thing for me is to celebrate the person's life. Without a doubt. Funerals. I... Funerals are my favorite things to do as a pastor. I love them. Um, you say you're morbid. Well, I don't think so. Because what I want to do is I want to find the wonderful things about the person, the way that they live, the way they reacted with other people. I want to go and I want to hear and I want to tell and I want to share and I want people to laugh and I want people to cry and I want them to tell the stories and... I want them to remember the past, to celebrate it, and then to let it go and let it be the past. And then I want them to celebrate the resurrection, the passing over of from here to there. And quite frankly, I'm one of those people that drinks the Kool-Aid. Danny Garrett, I miss him so much. I can't see straight during this time of the year. We used to talk several, several times. We'd even go to worship services together. Uh, a pastor in the Virginia Conference, his wife Susan, is one of the most wonderful people in the world. She was a district superintendent of mine. Uh, just a, Both of them are brilliant, wonderful, good-hearted, just good, good, good people. And I look forward to seeing Danny. I look forward to sitting down and talking with Danny. Um, just a great guy. So I want people to celebrate the past and let go of the funeral. And then I want people to celebrate the resurrection and begin to hold on to it. It's one of the things that I do inside of a funeral is that I, I ask people to hold on to it. It seems difficult for us to trust in hope, in the hope of the resurrection. And so I think we probably ought to ask ourselves some questions. Why do we look for the living among the dead? Why do we seek living things amongst dead things? Why do we have a greater trust in the palms than we do in the cross? See, the palms was about the power of this world. Jesus was coming into the world to take over, to make Israel the great thing again, and for the people to be blessed and raised up. But the cross.
cross. A cross. That was a tough one. And yet, does not the cross bring greater hope for the future than the palms? Let me ask you this. If you could believe, if you could know that there is a future with God and that that future with God is contingent upon the things that you do here, not whether God will love you or not, just simply that God loves you beyond your wildest imagination, but the way you live here with that love or rejecting that love would make a difference for eternity. For a hundred million years plus. Which would you choose? Which would you invest in? This is the thing. I think we really do believe more in the palms and celebrate the palms. If someone can give me a great life, if someone can give me money, if someone did anybody hit the lottery? That thing was over a billion dollars. Imagine getting a billion bucks. Huh. Imagine getting a billion bucks and then finding out that you only have a couple months to live because of a cancer that you pick up. How are you going to feel? See, that's an interesting thought because what we don't seem to do is we don't seem to see the resurrection as a blessing. Kenny Chesney, some years ago, sang a song, Everybody Wants to Go to Heaven. Do you remember that? It was a hilarious song, and yet it really wasn't. We all want to go to heaven, just not right now. In other words, we enjoy and buy into this world more than we think we're going to enjoy that world. I drink the cooler, the Kool-Aid. I drink it because I believe, I believe that when we do a funeral, that person has just entered a reality that's better than anyone in the room. Yes, we will miss them. Yes, no question. As I said, I miss Danny Garrett all the time, but during Easter, a lot. I miss Buzz O'Toole from my last church, a lot. I miss Frank from here. Neil, it just isn't this the way life is? Haven't you had buddies, friends? <clears throat> I, I watched a flick the other day because someone said I needed to see it before Easter called A Man Called Otto, A-O-T-O. He fell in love when he was a kid, married, they grew up together, they lived together, and as an older man... His wife died, and he was devastated because she was his north and his south, his east and his west. She was the center of his life. He became a bitter, bitter person. He went back to the grave and took her flowers over and over and over and sat there. He carried a lawn chair and sat there and talked to her. It was interesting. He wouldn't talk to anybody else in the world, but he talked to a grave. He tried to kill himself several times. None of them worked. In fact, he ends up saving a guy's life because of that. Finally, he hears a message from his wife to live on. That Dave Drinkard said to me this week, if our faith is worth anything at all, He says this at a funeral. He or she is not here. His resurrection is real. Dave, that really touched me. If our faith is worth anything at all at a funeral, he would say, Buzz is not here. Danny is not here. Neil is not here. Frank is not here. Pop is not here. His resurrection is real. 
the resurrection brings us anything. If it brings us anything, it, it brings us a new today and a new tomorrow. Filled with hope, love, joy, peace, grace, faith. Today, Easter, my favorite day. It's the day that, that the culmination of Jesus' entire life is wrapped together. I drink the Kool-Aid. I pray to God you do too. And I say to you, in a world that would uh, give you great things and steal lots from you, take a look at a God that loves you beyond your wildest imagination, that came to die for you, to offer you something wonderful in this world and the world to come. <sighs> Buy into that a little more. Make your life a little better. Amen. Happy Easter. Easter. God bless you. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all those who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and before one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you join me in praying silently for our sins? Hear the good news, the gospel. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Generous God, give thanks for all you have given us. We return from it in offering for the sake of spreading love as the body of Christ. Open us, Lord, to even better ways to steward your creation under our care. Help us to aid you and bring your kingdom to the world. 
In the name of Christ Jesus, we offer this prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. The night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he raised it, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a cup. He raised it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, O oh Lord, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gathered here, O Lord, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the whole world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and your Holy Church, honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Would you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord, make this be a means of grace for us, a place where we find your holy presence. Make this be for us a sign and a symbol of your sacrifice and a call for ours. You may receive your elements.
went to the world empowered by the Spirit of God. Be people of God who are living into their baptism, into that spark that's given you at your baptism. Be people who believe in the cross more than the palms, that believe in the resurrection more than the past. Go and do so in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day. A wonderful week.